So, we're really doing it this time, huh? What choice do we have? Marcus! I didn't expect you, buddy. Now I'm gonna have to get a new belt. You know, I was 60 pounds lighter when I started this job. Hey, good luck. After we do this, am I gonna be better off? Can't imagine it getting much worse. I have a child, a daughter, and a wife. I had it all. So, we really doing this? Why are you here? Why now? You know, I didn't leave because of you, right? Are you worried this gentleman has been out here for almost two days? Yeah, I know. He's my father. He's fine. We've got to stop shaming this. It's the only way it'll ever get better. But before that can happen, you've got to stop being ashamed of yourself. What's up, everybody? This is Fred Ricciani of TSC. We have right here on the line a very special guest. He's an incredibly talented actor and the star of the new drama out right now, Marcus, directed by J.R. Poli, tackling the tough topic of men's mental health. We're talking to the star himself, Owen. Thank you so much for the time. Owen Miller, how's everything going? Uh, Fred, everything is going great, my friend. Thank you so much for having me on. You play Marcus. This is a role that... Uh, I'm sure how to take a lot out of you uh, mentally, emotionally, but it is a very important film that does kind of confront the topic of mental health, in particular with the main character. How did you get involved with this film? I know the director. I, you know, sent him a pizza every day for the past 10 years in the hopes of landing a major <laughs> role like this. <laughs> no, no, J.R. and I, we we both started our um, our respective careers, J.R. being the director and the writer, our respective careers uh, at about the same time. Um, and um, we worked together on a short film, and uh, in short order, we developed a, a great respect for each other's talents and a, a fondness for each other and became friends rather quickly. And so we've worked together on a multitude of uh, projects through the years. And when uh, Marcus came along, when he conceived of this idea, um, he called me up and he pitched it to me. And I was uh, I initially... I was enthusiastic about the prospect of, of playing this character because um, as an actor, you know, you, you want to have an opportunity to um, get roles that allow you to really show the depth of your, 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 your abilities. And then it dawned on me that um, playing this role with Marcus was going to be um, a good bit dangerous for me because I had suffered with um, depression some 20 some years prior and it was so severe in my case and debilitating that it brought me to the doors of suicide so me now um, agreeing to play a character um, knowing that the only way to make this character real and, and live and authentic the only way to do that would be to revisit those those memories and those experiences um, yeah at, at that point I started to decide uh, or rather question myself, what are you doing? Did you realize at the time when you did that short film, which did get a lot of praise, that it would become a feature? Or did you figure, okay, this was great, this was powerful, but now it's time to move on to something else? I, I was totally drawn to this short film. It was provocative from the get-go. When JR pitched it to me, I got chills, I got goosebumps. I, um, and once we decided we were going to do this, I, I was all in. We had no idea it would have been um, so well-received. Um, it, it for sure was very timely and continues to be until this day. Uh, but we had no idea that it was going to be so well received. And because of the way the audience responded to it and the number of awards that we won, uh, we moved into uh, making it into a feature film. And I'm incredibly just thrilled that we did. You had a, a fantastic cast as well. The, the woman who played your daughter, daughter Katana Malone. Uh, of course, the big show, Paul White, who who was fantastic as well, playing a, kind of like your only friend as as Gus, your your, your colleague at, at work. Uh, what was it like working with such a unique cast? I'll start with Paul. Um, as, as, as anybody who knows about Paul White, you know that he dominates his, his world. You know, he is he's a man to reckon with. He has such a, a, a presence and he is so good in the world of wrestling that I uh, have admired him for quite some time. Now, I had absolutely no idea what to expect 
from him when he stepped into this world of acting. Now he's been doing it for a while. You see him, you know, doing the more um, imposing roles and some comedic stuff. But this dramatic thing, I wasn't sure what to expect. I'll tell you what, Paul stepped into that role and, and blew my mind. He, he came in and in short order, he just embodied this character of Gus. And um, wow, it, it was such a joy to see him do the work that he did. He brought the same patient and professionalism that you see him exhibited in the ring um, to the acting world. And I'm telling you, playing this dramatic role was just incredibly well executed. Uh, Kata Katana, yeah, wow. Katana, um, my girl, she, um, uh, we uh, met um, on the night when she was, um, JR was, um, wanted to do a screen test because he was on the side of this actress he was going to use. And um, there were two actresses that JR wanted that was just in love with for this role. And we, we did a screen test together. And the chemistry that um, that just unfolded between Katana and I was just beautiful. It was immediate. And that led to her landing that role. She's just awesome. No, de definitely. And I, and I did not realize, too, there are a couple things that really blew my mind uh, about Marcus. One, the fact that Katana, who sings in the film, had never sung professionally before. She just killed it yes. and then yes. the other the, and then the other thing which was absolutely insane is that you and, and paul had fantastic chemistry and from what i understand due to your busy schedules had only 15 minutes to rehearse together listen i i was upstairs um we we shot where we shot this film it was in a hotel or well this scene with paul or one of the um the the scenes um with paul i was upstairs rehearsing in anticipation of his arrival and um, a pa came upstairs I said, um, Paul is downstairs. Um, you, you may want to come down. So, you know, sure. I, I jumped up. Um, I was, you know, reclining on the floor, just running my lines. And I jumped up and I walked downstairs. And I, I had gone to about the third step from the bottom where Paul was standing. And he turned around and, you know, we made eye contact. And at that point, I was on eye level with the man. Okay. That's how tall, <laughs> that's how big Paul is. Um, we shook hands. Um, one of the things that so impressed me with Paul, um, aside from his accomplishment in the ring and in that world, was just the humility of the man. The fact that the man is so well accomplished and yet so humble and so wonderful and so down to earth. And it was as if we had known each other for, for eons. Um, we had like about 15 minutes or so to um, kind of get to know each other and to delve into uh, shooting that initial scene. And I'm telling you, once we got rolling, man, he just embodied Gus and that guy came to life. And it was just a beautiful thing to see. Yeah, an incredible guy, incredible talent. And, and you are certainly an incredible talent yourself. And it kind of blew my mind a little bit. We were talking off the air about how you didn't intend on becoming an actor, but listening to you speak, watching you in the film, I'm thinking, man, this guy's been been doing this for years. He was destined to do this. So how did you stumble into the wild world of acting? Okay. So um, indeed, I've been doing it for a little while. But what's crazy here, um, Fred, is that um, I have to take you back to my childhood because my my personality was not one that was given to performances and putting myself on display. As a kid growing up, I was incredibly shy and introverted. And if I walked into a room, a classroom, or a meeting of any kind, I would choose the most inconspicuous seat in which to place myself. I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to be noticed. I didn't need it. In fact, I was uncomfortable with it. So that's that's the world I came from. I, I was like that as a child, and I brought that into adulthood, only maybe it's just a little bit better. Um, in my 30s, I had a, a tragedy that occurred in my life, a tragedy that um, brought me to my knees um, and, and eventually brought me to the doors of depression. I was in this state for about two years in a very bad place. And um, I, um, I tried counseling. And in my case, it didn't work, mostly not because counseling doesn't work. But in my case, Fred, um, I was raised in a culture where the stiff upper lip dominated the way a man should behave. You don't, you don't talk about your struggles. You man up as the expression goes these days and, and you deal with it. So um, that's when I took that kind of an attitude in the counseling by the second session or third session, I just, you know, I couldn't be there. So out of desperation, I took up acting and you're probably asking how, why? Well, my brother, 
uh, my older brother, who was an actor at the time, and, and still is Doug, um, he had his face on billboards, he had commercials running, and he wanted to get me out of my apartment because all I did was work and came out home. I, I was just in a very bad place. Um, and I would say, Doug, that's, that's you, that's your world, that's not mine, I'm, the, I'm not that guy. But eventually it dawned on me, Fred, that possibly I could do, I could perhaps get involved in acting because... If I could engage some of these negative emotions that were now a constant companion, you name it, rage, um, a sense of failure, despair, I carried it around, I walked around with that all day long, every day. And I thought if I could only engage those, those feelings and emotions, I could perhaps extricate them. And the crazy thing is, in time, that experiment, that crazy experiment worked. And, and that's how I got into acting. I found one day I woke up and I didn't want to end myself anymore and i was left with this amazing gift that god man in a million years i never would have thought that i could do anything like this but i was now free of this desire to do away with myself and i was left with a gem of wow god gave you something that was just laying dormant in you all these years that you didn't know existed and, and so here i am and that's how i got into acting <laughs> Wow, man, that is that is absolutely incredible. I, hey, first of all, thank God that you got out. You got out of that. You came out the other side. You know, you. we're 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 happy to have you on. It's it, that that is wild because you know I'll just briefly tell a story. I didn't go through you know maybe as significant as loss as you, but I had, I had a tough time late last year, early this year, and then I just took acting for mental health. Like I just figured, okay, I'm hosting. I've done some. You know, I did an improv stuff like that. Whatever. I didn't need to go into detail. Got into mm -hmm. it, and I found out it was just so therapeutic. And I just, yes. fell in I just fell in love with it. And it, it really just, it, it exposes your vulnerabilities, but it also makes you like embrace them. And I almost feel like, and, and you could probably speak on this more than I can. It, it, it almost, it, it makes you feel a better person because you, you learn about your strengths, but you also learn about your weaknesses and you constantly feel the need to improve. In a million years, I never would have thought that I would be this guy today. Um, uh, being a, a lead actor in such a provocative film, uh, even a bit role as a child, I never would have attempted. Um, but this this whole journey, and, and, and if I meant to segue into some, I, I just want to touch on, um, there, there are times we, in our lives, right, we, we go through some horrible things, and, and as humans, we absolutely want it to be over with. We, we want it to stop. We want it to end. And yet, sometimes some of the terrible things that we go through in our lives are so essential to us off a path that we're currently on onto one that perhaps is more conducive to where we, where we need to be. And um, that, for me, even as horrible as my experience was, I never would be an actor today if not for what I got through. Because I never would have had the um, the desire in an effort to save myself to, to pursue acting as I did. Uh, I ended up also meeting the woman of my dreams. Got got married, and we have three 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 sons. So a lot of good came out of that pain. You've been friends with J.R. Poli, the director of this film, who went through his own you know, battle with depression and everything for twenty years. So did he ever at one point push you to say, "Hey, man, let's let's get more involved in film," or were you kind of like, "Eh," and, until you know everything that happened? When I met Jr., uh, when I met Jr., we 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 were both started off in our in our respective um, journeys. Him as a writer, director, and me as as an actor and 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 so um we we became friends and everything that he did from that point forward because we developed this respect this mutual respect for each other's talents um pretty much i've worked on pretty much everything that he has is done um since um i didn't know about jr's struggles i didn't know about his journey and the crazy thing is when he cast me uh, he had no idea about my history he, he was simply cast in um, for this role, an actor that he believed in, that he think would help him to bring this, this story to life and this character to life. Uh, in fact, um, Fred, when, when he pitched it to me, I remember get it, getting goosebumps. And I, I got goosebumps from two perspectives. One, because the, 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 the story was just so incredibly provocative. And, and, and as an actor, it's the kind of stuff you want to be involved in and immerse yourself in and just, you know, see what you could do with this crazy role. But on the other hand, it was because I could so identify with the pain of Marcus, you know, um, not so much so his journey per se, but the pain that the man went through. I had those pains and I had those lows and I had those struggles. So, yeah. Glad you made it out on the other side, along with, with JR and, and, and Katana and, and Paul. You all did a great job. We could all check out Marcus on Blu-ray and video on demand right now. All major platforms, including iTunes, of course. 
and Google Play. Now, we've talked about some heavy subject matter here, but we do yeah. also like to keep on, on a bit of the lighter side. Are you ready for some random and rapid fire questions for fans just to get to know you better? Okay, sure. Let's go ahead. First, I should say that I checked out your Instagram. And All dude, right. you you are swole, as the kids say, man. You you have a fantastic <laughs> workout regimen. Uh, I almost feel bad for not calling you Mr. Miller because, you know, I want to stay on your good side and everything. Oh, so I'll good. kick it off with this. <laughs> What's your favorite cheat meal? Um, my favorite cheat meal, man, I'm, I'm a chocoholic. Um, so anything chocolate uh, is good for me. I love a Hagen dazs um, um, peanut butter chocolate. But I think my absolute favorite is, um, wow, Captain Jack's is this ice cream um, cake um dessert that they have at the miller ale house and I, I try not to do it more than once every couple of months because you you start down that journey and then you're going to lose all the all the hard work that you put into your you know physical training so <laughs> fair enough who are some of your favorite actors and actresses to watch study anybody that kind of in, inspired you as you were starting your acting journey ah god um Currently, anyone that I see that takes a serious, take their craft seriously and really put a lot of work into their performances. And as an actor, you learn to recognize that. But um, the constants for me that that helped me and that I looked at when I started on this journey were, were two actors, um, Clint Eastwood and uh, Sidney Poitier. Uh, Clint Eastwood, because this man, he can tell so much uh, and say so much uh, without a word. Uh, his facial expression, his body language communicates so much. And I, I find that that has always been, once I discovered acting, that has been the approach that I've taken. And then when I saw, realized that, that Clint was the master of that, it was just like, wow, wow. Um, I found validation in watching him. So just just awesome. Uh, Sidney Poitier, wow. The, the dignity of the man and his performances has always just resonated with me so they, those two have always been my my absolute favorite um actors and greatest influence on my career love that now i know marcus is a, is a pretty fear, serious film marcus tackles a lot of you know kind of difficult subject matter but on the lighter side were there any kind of funny or awkward moments in the filming of marcus that maybe seemed chaotic at the time but now make for a funny story god i wish i there was, was something i could um tell you that was indeed so um, or fabricate the story on the spot. <laughs> but I was so, <laughs> I am one of those actors that I stay in character quite a bit. And so Marcus was this kind of guy who was always just trying to survive for the most part. Um, that That's where I was a good bit of the time. And I, I would do it again. Um, one of the reasons, Fred, that I so loved and enjoyed doing this movie was because I, I know what that journey is like, and I know that there's so many people out there in the world who are just struggling, and, and so just having the ability as an actor to be able to speak to the subject and just give people hope and be a part of that uh, process of providing people with hope is just it's just been wonderful for me. I, 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 get, I mean, I get, correct me if I'm wrong, you were kind of method acting in a way, but it, it's funny because we always hear about method acting and then you hear about how an actor or an actress is, is not a nice person or anything. Everybody I've talked to has spoken glowingly about you. So I would imagine staying in character while also being nice to the cast and crew. You, you know, you could, you could do both, right? Well, listen, um, and Gerald will tell you this. Um, you know, uh, I, I would often, when I'm not shooting, I would go off, you know, I would go off to a corner by myself or I would step outside away from set. I remember the first time I saw that in evidence in the early part of my career, there was an actor, Brian Denny, that I worked on a film, a very small role, may have been an extra. And I remember we were told not to talk to him while he was filming. And um, he would step off set and he would get into a wait in Lincoln and he would sit in there and he would be by himself. And then whenever they were ready for him, he would step back on set. And I, um, some, some people thought he was standoffish or whatever. As I grew in my acting career, I, I learned the value of that. I'm I'm not, for the most part, one of those actors who will bounce between the character that I'm playing and doing some outlandish thing while on set and then just regroup and go right back in. Um, I find it easier to maintain my presence, especially if it's a role like such as Marcus. For sure. 
Uh, we've talked so much about your journey and, and everything, all the struggles you've overcome, the success you're currently having. For anybody watching or listening to this, what's the best piece of advice you give them for success? I've been at this for um, 20 something years as an actor. Um, I've seen a lot of people enter the industry and after a few years of not getting where they thought they needed to be or land in that enviable role that would put them, you know, um, where Tom Cruise or Denzel Washington, where they are. And you see them step away from, from, from um, the industry. I say, if you really love what you do and you want it, you just do it every day, one day after the other. Um, just, just stay with it. If it is something that you have a passion for that you love, stay with it, you know, and, and find the fun and the joy in it. Enjoy the journey. It's not just about getting to the destination. Why should people watch Marcus? Marcus is, is a film that I think everyone should watch. Um, and I say that not just because I'm in it. Um, I say that because I know the value of the film. Statistically, they say that, what, uh, like 26%, Fred, of all of us here in the United States will at some point have some kind of a battle with mental health issues. That, that's, that's a big number. So essentially, um, either you or I will go through it or we'll know someone, family or friend or a colleague who will go through it. So I think everyone should see this film because of the value it brings. It, it helps you to appreciate what the person who is struggling is going through. But it also gives you insight into those in a space, in that person's space, how um, how you can be um, better supportive. And you don't have to be have a PhD. You don't have to have letters behind your name to be supportive and to help somebody who is in that desperate place. Powerful stuff. Powerful film. Fantastic performance. We really do appreciate your time. Before we let you go, where can fans find you online and where can we find you next? So online, um, you know, you can just uh, through my name, Owen Miller. You can find me on IMDb. You can find me on uh, Facebook, on Instagram. I'm the Owen Miller. And what's next? I'm connected to a number of films, a couple of um, TV series prospects that are out there. Uh, interestingly enough, a few of them are um, uh, JR is developing, JR Poli. Um, not sure which will drop first, but I'd say I'm attached to about a dozen projects and I can't wait to see what happens next. And I'll keep you posted. Awesome. Hey, biz business is booming. So please keep us posted. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. I, I'll do that. I'll definitely do that.